Welcome to another edition of Journey of Hope. Stories of impact Loma Linda University Medical Center is making around the world. Our special guest today is Roger Hadley, Dr. Roger Hadley, Executive Vice President for Medical Affairs at Loma Linda University Adventist Health Science Center and Dean for the School of Medicine at Loma Linda University. Dr. Hadley, Roger, I'm going to call you. It's good to have you here and we have people from around the world that are watching this program. And we want to talk a little bit about you, your background, and about uh, what's happening here at Loma Linda. I know this is a, a big year. It's the year of Centennial, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But uh, tell us a little bit, and our audience in particular, about you. Hadley is a sure. name that's known for many years around different places. Now, tell us where you are in this stream of people. Well, I'm... Um I'm the third of uh, four generations of graduates from the School of Medicine. Four uh, generations? Four generations. Uh, my grandfather, Barnes, who was my mother's father, graduated in 1922. My father, Dr. Henry Hadley, uh, graduated from the School of Medicine in 1946. I graduated in 1974. And then my son, my son David Hadley, graduated in 2005. So I'm the third of four generations of the School of Medicine that here. That is absolutely amazing. Now, I was back in the Washington, D.C. area, and there was a Hadley Hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, who is that uh, named after? Or for? That's, that's my paternal grandfather. That's Dr. Henry Gilbert Hadley. Uh, he actually attended medical school here in 1914. However, because of the accreditation process, he finished his medical school at George Washington uh, university and then stayed in the southeast side of, of uh, Washington DC uh, and served that community for over 50 years as a primary care doctor to a very small community on the southeast side of Washington DC. Yeah. Built a hospital called the Hadley Memorial Hospital which is still there. Yeah and it made a, a particular impact upon that portion of society at that time. For, uh, for I didn't realize 50 years. 50 plus years. He started out in a clinic which um, uh, had an upstairs for his home and downstairs was the clinic that essentially ran 24-7. My grandmother would not wake up the doctor. She would handle all the um, suturing and the cleaning wounds and the emergency calls because she didn't want to wake, wake up the doctor. Uh, and uh, although a, a nurse back then, you know, they sort of practice medicine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Much more so, yes. Yeah. But it was the poor community of Washington, D.C., and that was a very important part of my um, grandfather's work was to, was to serve the poor on that side of Washington, D.C. Well, with all those generations uh, behind you and following you, did you have a choice about what you wanted to do when you uh, went to school? I did. I did have a choice, um, and uh, I felt as though being a medical doctor was my choice. And, you know, it's been better than I thought it would be. Uh, being able to serve as a physician is, is, is a very unique privilege, and, uh, and I enjoy it every day. And we're going to talk about the difference of graduating and coming here to Loma Linda just in, in just a minute. But uh, you you graduated from Loma Linda, then you went on and specialized in what area? Well, I specialized not only in general surgery, which I completed the training, but then I took urological surgery uh, at UCLA and then did a fellowship in, in bladder control, uh, female urology and bladder control. And then I came, uh, immediately upon completing that fellowship, I came back to Loma Linda joined the faculty and I've been here ever since. And uh, you eventually were the head of the Department of Urology mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. uh, became the Dean for the School of Medicine mm -hmm. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Now this, uh, uh, when did when did the medical school get started? Well the School of Medicine started in 1909, 100 years ago. Uh, we're not exactly certain the first day of school but we believe it was in October towards the end. So we're planning to celebrate our 100th birthday at the end of October with a, with a four-day celebration, four-day birthday party in which we plan to celebrate what the School of Medicine has been all about over these 100 years. So in 100 years, and how many, how many people are we talking about have graduated? Uh, do you know? Close to 10,000. In, in a couple of years, we're going to graduate the 10,000th graduate. Of course, we'll have a little celebration when, the, when, when that student when the, marches across. All, commencement. Nearly 10,000 mm -hmm. men and women mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, have gone, graduated from here, yep. and many of them have gone overseas. In fact, I've, I've heard different re references to the fact that Loma Linda has uh, sent a number of people overseas. Well, they've sent a, a large number we can't count, but we're relatively confident that those who went overseas for at least one year, that count is probably over 1,000, which, by the way, is 
far more than any other medical school has done as far as training doctors to serve overseas. In other words, more, more people have graduated from Loma Linda in the School of Medicine and have made an impact by going overseas, serving overseas in a world capacity somewhere than any of the other medical schools. Uh, I, th I think that's a very fair yeah, statement. I mean, I've heard that uh, mm -hmm. stated on a number of different occasions. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I know that they did was, uh, in preparation for this, is this morning rounds. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the morning rounds. Morning rounds is a, is a devotional book, uh, a devotional book that uh, sh we think should be timeless. In thinking of the 100 year celebration, we thought, how can we best tell the story and involve so many people? Because as you can imagine, 100 years of people graduating from a school with a unique mission, there's a lot of stories out there. And Morning Rounds probably captures those stories as well as any document can. And friends of Loma Linda, mainly alumni of Loma Linda, medical students, alumni of 103 years of age, Fresh medical 103 student. years of age. Dr. Have Brown. Have some devotions in here. Yep, that's right. Unbelievable. Uh, the former deans, the former chairs of departments, the former uh, award-winning students contributed to Morning Rounds, and it's a collection of stories that if anybody wants to, with one book, read what is the story of Loma Linda, it's in this devotional book. It's captured here. I know because I was given the opportunity, and I do have one of the devotions in there. It was yep. about my experience yep. with some people here and mm -hmm. uh, being uh, one of the patients here. But it, and I've been reading it. I need to let you know that Good. I've been reading it uh, okay. day by day and uh, know many of the, of the writers there. And it is, it's a very touching experience and it does capture what is about Loma Linda is all about and, mm -hmm. and uh, the essence. Now, for our, our listening audience, sure. you know, Loma Linda is one of 125 health science institutions. Mm -hmm. What is different about Loma Linda? I mean, it's a Seventh-day Adventist institution. Mm -hmm. That makes it somewhat different. And I tell our patients that are coming here that, you know, we're a religious institution and we make no apologies mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. We believe that we're different. Now, how is Loma Linda different when we're a student comes here? We're different in a number of ways. and the. The, the, the remarkable thing is, is what we're, what's, what's different about us now is the same thing that was different about us 100 years ago. Haven't changed. We haven't changed. And that is, is we are here to train overseas missionaries as, as the church leaders want us to do. That's when I noticed that's one of the first things you're mentioning. That's right. Okay. That we're here to train physicians to include the spiritual component of one's whole person health. We've talked about whole person care. Whole person care is not only addressing the physical and mental needs, which the other medical stu schools do. Whole person care. Whole person care includes the patient's spiritual needs. And there's just evidence upon evidence that patient's wellness depends as much on their spiritual lives as their physical and mental lives. And the third thing is, is that um, living healthfully. We have, we have talked about healthful living with diet and exercise years before other schools did. Now the rest of them are catching up. Little but, by little. But, but we still uh, emphasize those three points. We've done those uniquely well. Uh, we're excited about our outcomes. Uh, and we're excited about going into our second 100 years with the same. It's unbelievable. Second 100 years. Yeah. And yeah. right now our goal is really still the same as it was when we first started out. Now what was the, the name of the original school? Uh, the College of Medical Evangelists, okay. a school that uh, included the nursing school and the dental school. Nursing school actually precedes us by three years. Okay. I'm reminded about that. Right, I know. Right. We had a celebration a little yeah. earlier. Um, uh, but it was College of Medical Evangelists. The name changed in the 60s to Loma University. The graduates from the College of Medical Evangelists had the opportunity to change their diplomas to Loma University. But you know, those old CME diplomas are pretty valuable They right now. wanted them, and the evangelist was a part of it. Yeah. And they're graduating today, and they're still evangelists. It's just not a part of the original a part of the original title. That's correct. Now, I had a note down here, because I remember sometime a year ago, you were talking about one of the interesting applications. And you know, I haven't talked about this. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was uh, different people apply. And can you think of any, any interesting experience of somebody that applied and put down some of the criteria and why they maybe should be accepted? Well, when we look at applicants to Loma Linda School of Medicine. And how many were we able to accept? Oh, well, we're, we're able to accept about 165 per year. Okay. Uh, we have several thousand that apply, but we narrow it down pretty quickly because pretty much anybody we accept needs to be very clear in their application and interviews that 
the spiritual part of their life is not only an important part about their life, but it will be an important part of their care of patients. Okay, that's a very significant, not only with the present, but the way they're going to be relating that. That's correct. And interestingly enough, when you think of the academic medical centers, you mentioned 125, a lot of those are state schools, and they actually are prohibited. They're prohibited from talking about this. About religion, uh, yeah. And so students will actually hesitate to even say anything about their spiritual lives for fear that that'll, um, that'll lessen their, their attractiveness to, this, to the school. But in Loma Linda, that is essentially a requirement. That's be a very significant yeah. point then. Whether you're a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church or whether you're the 25% we, we accept that are not members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they all say spirituality is an important part of who they are. And so we look at that application, we expect to see that conveyed. Oh, we have some interesting applications, because as you know, it's competitive to get into medical school. Oh, it's got to be extremely difficult. You're and talking about thousands of applying, and you're only getting 120, yeah. 125, 50. That's right. And so if you're a medical student and want to get in, and let's say you don't know much about the Seventh-day Adventist Church, well, you want to put things in there that would uh, maybe help your application. So you'll see things like, I understand the Adventist worship on Sabbath, on Saturday, uh, I have traditionally worshipped on Sunday, but if you want me to, I'll worship on both days. <laughs> oh, very good. And we had another one say, if you want me to, I'll give up pork. They, they and, actually put it on the application. And one of them said, would it help if I told you I didn't dance very well? That's the one I was remembering. Yeah. I heard about a yeah. few years ago. So it, it, it's, it's good. And, the, and, you know, we take these, these applicants we take, are, um, they're, they're qualified, they're excited about the being, being doctors, and they're really excited about our mission of... of of understanding that a patient's wellness can be can be even can be better addressed if you know when and how and that's important both when and how to approach a patient about their spirituality well I remember I was invited in uh, several several months ago to speak uh, to I think what they call it morning rounds or rounds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we had a you had a, a, a guest speaker from out of state and he you know, interviewed me and he talked and openly admit mm -hmm. and acknowledge the difficulty that he had in dealing with the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. what, what, uh, what is there about our curriculum? I mean, what, what do you do to help students? I mean, apparently they've already made some kind of a commitment, acknowledgement that uh, spiritual, uh, spirituality is mm -hmm. an important part. Mm -hmm. what, how do you help students? I mean, this isn't something you get out of a textbook. No, and from day one, our curriculum is unique in the religion courses that we require all our students, freshman and sophomore year, to take. The first class being a religion class that talks about suffering and ethics, uh, why, why, where God is in suffering, especially in children's suffering, uh, uh, disease and how it relates to, to, to sin, uh, and other very important subjects that will make the physician more capable of answering a question that we commonly get. Doctor, why do I have this cancer? Doctor, why did that drunk driver kill my son in the crosswalk? Where was God in this? You know, Loma Linda is going to help them. Loma Linda is going to help the student address those questions. So, they, I mean, are they getting this um, really on a, on a weekly and a monthly mm -hmm. and a day? It's just a part of the curriculum and their interaction with, and that's why it's so important for the mentors that they have. That is correct, and it is part of the, um, of the basic science curriculum or the first two years, which is more didactic. And even in the, uh, the third and fourth year, which is the clinical years, uh, they will have mentors who, who not uncommonly will, pay, will pray with patients. And we have even electives that students can take, which is the most popular elective, by the way, called uh, spiritual, spiritual care and wholeness. And uh, that's a time in which they can spend with people who will actually be asked to see certain patients that are in prayer. It's kind of out of the chaplain's office in the religion department. And so it, again, this is a mentoring and observing yes, and, yes. and experiencing then for yeah. them. And this is when in their third, pri primarily in the third and fourth year. Third and year. fourth year, that yeah. is correct. So if a student's going to get eliminated out of the program, is it really the first year? Uh, illuminated or eliminated? Yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of eliminated, yeah, we, but they're illuminated also. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, if they're eliminated out of the program, you mean for the academic reasons? Yeah, or? I mean, they're eliminating themselves. For yeah. you know, I, I know my son went yeah. through medical school, and it seemed like, and as I've been here over the years, mm -hmm. it's that freshman year that's the really, yeah. it, it's, it's, uh, it's the testing time for yeah. them. And part of the curriculum is not only learning about how to address a patient's own wholeness, but to, to also understand their personal wholeness. And that's part of the curriculum is, is learning 
how you can best survive under the rigors of, of, of health care. Well, and that's critically important because I know it doesn't get easier as the years go on and mm -hmm. the second, third, and fourth year. I yeah. mean, I think if I remember correctly, it's the freshman year where they get a, a little bit of the summer off. Uh, yes. A, a little a, bit. A much needed, much deserved uh, yeah. summer off. Yeah. And then from that point on, there's not a lot of time. So this emphasizing the personal wholeness and the wellness yeah. is a yeah. is a critical yeah. thing. We got a few pictures here. Let's take a sure. look at them. I'll let you just kind sure. of speak to them. Mm -hmm. Tell us what we've got here. Uh, that's the faculty medical offices. Um, it's it was it's built in two stages. You notice the stage on the left is the older, and then the state uh, then the building on the right is is newer. Uh, they're connected. And how many how many people do we have in there? Oh my, we have half the clinical faculties in there, and between this building and a couple of other outpatient facilities, we see over half a million patients a year. Half a million. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the older building that was completed in 1989. Uh, it became very clear that that was go not going to be sufficient, and so they, uh, within a few years, built the second wing. Well, I know we're constantly faced with expansion and crowded mm -hmm. conditions. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the, uh, s the statue of the Good Samaritan depicting the story of the Good Samaritan, uh, which probably reflects most accurately what we do here at Loma Linda, and that is service to others. Uh, and that's actually relatively new to this campus. Uh, however, it's become what the focal point on this campus, uh, much visited, much photographed, and this is actually in the original um, composition. Uh -huh. uh, it has since been bronzed because the, um, the clear air in Loma Linda started to, to uh, erode. Yes, begin to affect it. Yes, yes. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the bronze is uh, the one that people are seeing now. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, people come from all around and uh, mm -hmm. take pictures there. You know, that's uh, my uncle, Gordon Hadley, and his wife, Alfie, um, well known amongst the alumni. Uh, uh, Gordon Hadley uh, has a remarkable record serving overseas, making major impact in Afghanistan and China, impact that we still are uh, appreciating now for his work. Um, he's there in his Corvair. Which is a very rare car to begin with. It is. And wasn't he also a dean for the School of Medicine? He was dean of the School of Medicine. And uh, I would say unquestionably, the most common question I'm asked as dean, are you related to Gordon? I say yes, he's my uncle. Does he still remember everybody's name? Because uh, Dr. Gordon Hadley had a unique expertise in looking at a very poor black and white photo on an application, memorizing it, memorizing the name, and welcoming each student to their freshman year by first and last name. <laughs> Unreal. And this is Gordon, Hadley, and myself. Um, this is now in the current dean's office. Uh, again, a position he held back in the, in, in the 70s and 80s. And he is still very, very active. Yeah. And I see in his wife all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. Not sure. Can't seem to be forward in these pictures on. There we go. Uh, that's actually my father, Dr. Henry Hadley. Uh, he was known as a uh, excellent lecturer and a storyteller of Villa Melinda. Uh, and when he passed away in 1993, I inherited all of his movies and slides that he had that, 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 uh, that, was, that, that, that records quite accurately the history of Loma Linda, uh, and especially as he saw it. He, uh, he had a way of looking at the more humorous side of, of the happenings in Loma Linda. That's the Nichols Hall now. It was the, um, it was the second hospital on this campus, the first hospital being the sanitarium, which was converted from a hotel in the original purchase in 1906. Then they built this hospital, it's called the Hospital on the Hill, and in 1967 we moved to the medical center as we see it today. So this was uh, taken sometime several years ago? Yes, this would be uh, in, in the 40s or 50s. Yeah, okay. Uh, during uh, World War II, uh, medical students were allowed to continue on medical school, but they had to serve uh, as, as part of a military, and this is on our campus, this is in the main campus um, of people during World War II uh, 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 meeting their military obligations. Okay. The VA hospital. This is a hospital that was built just down the street from Loma Linda. Been a very important part of our educational system to have a VA hospital right in our town. Uh, it is now the single largest VA hospital in Southern California. And what kind of, I mean, not only are in the same city, but what kind of a relationship do they have with Loma Linda? Very close relationship. All the, all the uh, physicians on the, at the VA have faculty appointments and all of them are involved in teaching our medical students and okay. residents. So it's really a, really a collaboration here. And, and very important part to, to Loma Linda's success as an excellent teaching institution. Okay. This is Risley Hall. Uh, I wasn't there then. This is 1964 when Risley Hall, which was a three-story building, the third story um, uh, was subjected to fire 
And rather than rebuilding the building, they just sort of cut the third floor off, and now it's a two-story building and still uses, what, as still uses one of our research um, buildings. Well, when I saw these pictures, I had not realized that there had even been a fire there and yeah. didn't realize about the third story, and yeah. apparently here they're trying to put the fire yep. out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there it is from the front, as it was at three stories. Now, um, uh, now if you come to our campus, you'll just see a two-story Risley Hall. Uh, this is on Stewart Street. I think people will recognize the mountain in the background, Mount San Bernardino. Uh, the mountain hasn't moved. One of the clear days that we have here in Loma, in Loma Linda, snow yep. in the background. And what kind of a car do we have there? Um, you know, you didn't give me adequate prep time to know that. I, I, I know the old timers will know exactly what car that is. Uh, I do know it's on Stewart Street. Okay. Uh, this is a picture of me, of, of my father and I in, in, in the early 1970s, <laughs> and uh, I take it as a, as a privilege to have learned how to tie a knot, tie a surgical knot for my father, uh, taking suture along a belt loop and, and sitting by the hour and learning to tie knots as, with the facility is that the surgeon needs. Is that where you learn to yep. do your knot tying? Look, I never even thought that, you know, yeah. doctors learned, had to learn to yep. tie knots. That's a great picture. Yep. All right, well, we got uh, an amazing story that's uh, developing here. And you just had, we just had graduation here uh, mm -hmm. a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, do we have any, any idea how many of those are going to be going overseas? And we, uh, when they graduate, are they able to go out and start practicing? Or what happens then? No, of course, when they graduate, they go to a residency. A residency is required by all graduates. So they have generally four years of college four years of medical school mm -hmm. and then they graduate and that's what we just had mm -hmm. so then what happens then they move to four years of residency uh... And well, not, not everybody has four years well it's either three it's between three and six years okay so you're talking about an average then of four yep. years okay about an average of four years uh... the residency and then they are certified to go out and practice uh... you can get a license a little bit before that but generally all all students finish a residency now of our graduates, we have a number who have committed themselves to the deferred mission program. Oh, you mean they, when they come and somewhere between second, third, fourth year, they make a commitment mm -hmm. to go overseas. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and they, who are they making that to? To the they, medical they, center, to the to the church, or to they, they make the commitment to the university, they make the commitment to the school of medicine, and they make the commitment to the church. Now, the commitment is a scholarship program that as long as they serve overseas, um, their scholarships remain intact. And it's a, it's a great program because as you know, pet medical education has become prohibitively expensive. It is. And if you serve overseas, it's impossible to pay your loans back. But as long as you're serving overseas in one of the Loma University designated missionaries, and there's ample number of those, more than 40, and as long as you're willing to take medical students into your mission service and teach them about overseas, Health care, um, we will continue to assist you in your in your uh, loan repayments. Uh, it's really a win-win situation for all. And whereas just a few years ago we had only six or seven of all of our medical students in the program, we now have over fifty students in the deferred mission. Fifty, yes, already. Oh, mm -hmm. that is absolutely wonderful. I know this just got started a few years ago, mm -hmm. and so it's growing. Probably every year, mm -hmm. it's uh, growing and expanding. Uh, so if they go overseas, how long do they have to do to take, really take care of most of the medical bill? Uh, the program is flexible, and that is is that uh, if they spent one year or if they spent ten years. Uh, they have the option. How much the loan we pay off depends upon how long they've been there. Sure, but I think it's kind of prorated. Yeah, it's prorated, and, and it depends on. Uh, and I know uh, have, so how long has this program been going on now? This particular program uh, has, uh, with its modifications, been going on for four or five years. Uh, the DMA program, Deferred Mission Appointment Program, in a, in, in some four. form or the other has been going on for years, yeah. it, well over 35, 40 years. But in the present form, it's kind of coming back, and it's really, mm -hmm. really an encouragement and yeah. tr a tremendous opportunity. And it is a win-win, win for mm -hmm. the university, the medical school, mm -hmm. for, this, for, the, uh, for the graduates, and for the church, because mm -hmm. they're getting a uh, tremendous impact making mm -hmm. uh, around the world. That's right. Well, uh, this is the year of the centennial. What mm -hmm. kind of things do you have planned? Maybe you could share just a couple of things. we got a couple sure. minutes left here. We are. Um, 
uh, going to start on Thursday with some tours of the institution. You know, we've grown so much just even in the last 10 or 15 years. Now you talk about the Thursday of the of, oh. the, of those four days. Thank you. Yeah, the Thursday of the last week of November. Okay. Um, uh, which is the 29th, 30, 31st, which is a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, on Thursday night, Lisa Ling, a uh, a a recognized uh, international reporter. Uh, will be our guest speaker talking about going into the world, which is part of our mission. On um, Friday, we're going to have some CME for people of, um, in healthcare. Uh, we're going to talk about lifestyle, which has been a very important part of, um, uh, of, of Loma Linda's mission. That is lifestyle, medicine, diet, exercise, uh, and other aspects about uh, healthy living. We're also going to be talking about um, uh, global health. Uh, we have a guest speaker. Um, who's going to come in, who's the co-founder of the AIDS virus, who's going to speak about its impact, uh, Robert Gallo. Um, and then Friday night, we, um, we're going to have a program of music uh, and, um, and special uh, discussion that's focused towards religion. Uh, Saturday, we're going to tell some mission stories about Loma Linda and its history and missions. Uh, Randy Roberts is going to give the Sabbath sermon. In the afternoon, we have Vespers with Lynn Bailey talking about the Open Heart Transplant Program. Saturday night, we're going to have Brian Clay, a gold medalist uh, in the last uh, Summer Olympics, who's going to speak about his Christianity and, and how the Olympic stage has given him the opportunity to share his story with Christ. You have a wonderful weekend that's going to culminate this 100 years. Well, for our listening audience, you had a glimpse at what the, is behind the story here at Loma Linda and uh, the graduates that are going out, the impact that's being made, not only here in this country, but around the world. And uh, Ron, Dr. Hadley here is uh, the dean for the School of Medicine. They just had a graduation. They're looking forward to this big celebration, completing 100 years of service around the world here in this country. And for those of you that are looking on, there may be somebody out there that uh, has a desire to become a doctor. Well, Loma Linda should be your first choice. Make it a matter of prayer, and if God has a plan for you and mission service, this is the place for you to be. Thank you, Dr. Hadley, for being with you. I'm Lynn Martell for The Journey of Hope. God bless you.